Godot 4. When Godot 4 was fresh out the oven, one of the things that started happening was amazing looking scenes started appearing. Right? There were a, a couple that were super notable. One of those scenes was the one that you can see over here called the spaceship demo scene. Everyone I know that saw it was like, is this, is this Godot? No way. No, it was amazing. Um, our host today, um, Janusz Jago, is here to talk to us about the process and some super clever techniques that you can use in 3D game production. Really cool stuff, can't wait for it. So everyone, let's welcome Janusz Jago to the stage. Hello everyone, I'm Janus. Uh, thank you for inviting me to Kodokon. And I have an honor to tell you about my journey uh, to, to make this, uh, this cool demo scene for Kodok 4. So in this talk, I will describe my workflows, uh, processes, how, how I made graphics and, and make, made it work in Kodok. Uh, I will also cover which tools I used and um, and also maybe give you some, some uh, technical tips of how, to, how you can make similar things and, and hopefully even inspire you a bit uh, to do the same. Uh, and for the, if, if, if here are any Godot engine developers, then uh, maybe I will also talk about some of the issues that I had and can give, give you some, some uh, remarks about uh, how I overcome these issues and, and maybe nights you towards fixing uh, some of them. So let's get started. But first of all, let me briefly introduce myself. So my name is Janusz Jako. Um, I am an indie game developer from Estonia. So Estonia is a small Baltic country right below the Finland. <laughs> and um, and um, uh, yeah, and I'm also like a I'm living kind of like a dual life, so, <laughs> so I'm also a, a teacher. I'm a junior lecturer at the University of Tartu, Institute of Computer Science. And um, I'm teaching pretty much the same thing that I'm, I'm doing in, as, as my whole time. I'm teaching game development and computer graphics. And all the time I I've, I've, have left over, I'm making my own games. So maybe you've also seen my game plus or not before, noticed that. <laughs> So, so yeah, uh, I've been making it quite, quite a while now. And actually, I migrated to the Godot engine, uh, actually quite recently. Uh, it was year 2020 when the pandemic started. And I was kind of burned out a little bit from, from my previous engine. So I decided to go, uh, give Godot a, go, a try. And I really liked it so much that I, I didn't want to really go back anymore. And, and, and I continued working with this, this project that I started, the Plasternaut project. It's a, like a, it, it puts uh, Godot game engine quite, quite to the test. And, and, uh, and although it's a 2D game, uh, it uh, has an infinite procedural world. And, and uh, you, can, you can check my previous talk from, from the earlier Godotcon. I, I gave a very brief one about how this was made. Uh, but thanks to Godot Engine, I, I was also able to release this game uh, in early access uh, last year. And since that, I'm, I'm trying to be like a good indie developer, like keep updating my early access game and, and not forgetting, uh, forgetting it. So, so since that, I've, I've added quite, quite, quite a lot of updates and, and that's, that's my main thing. Now, the motivation for working on this uh, Godot 4 demo scene uh, actually came from, from the reason that the Godot 4 came out earlier this year. And at that time, the like, release candidates already started appearing, and, and it, was, it was pretty much the prime time to, to uh, test it out and, and uh, see what I, what I can do with it. So, I decided to brush off some of the dust <laughs> from my 3D modeling skills, as I hadn't done it for, for three years. <laughs> uh, so, and, and at the time, there also weren't many, many 3D like, demo scenes. So I, I think still there are a few enough that, uh, that we would like, like to have them more. So, so 
I hope that to, uh, today's talk will like, encourage you to maybe try to try the same thing. Although uh, my friend Rafa uh, had, had made a really cool like uh, car scene for for his game uh, for Franz Furi that that you can see here, and and I, I wanted to try something similar, <laughs> and 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 maybe do something something to also like boost my own game. So the very original original idea uh, came from the uh, the Devolverland Expo. So this was actually like a pretty cool uh, little like um, free game uh, made by the Devolver Digital Publisher and released uh, uh, like uh, like free in Steam. Uh, and a lot of people really liked it, and it was a cool marketing product because it showed all the different games that they they made there. And and I thought that. It would be pretty nice to have something similar for Godot games, and and there there were at the time already quite a lot of pretty pretty cool and successful Godot games uh, finished as well. So my very original idea was to actually make some kind of a um, futuristic sci-fi game shop that that, is, that displays all the different uh, Godot games. How uh, so? And I haven't still haven't like thrown this this idea to the bin yet, <laughs> but uh, so if if there are some developers who, who have made their their released their games and they are up to up to trying something new, then then maybe we can collaborate in the future. Uh, but uh, back at at the beginning of this year, I I, I thought that I didn't have enough time to 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 really finish it and gather all, all the developers for for the moment. So I and and the scene also seemed to be uh, quite quite uh, difficult to make a lot of lot of different environments and uh, asset pieces so i wanted to do something something simpler and really get it done so at the time i also had played around a little bit with ai image generation and i got this really i really like this uh, this uh, spaceship hangar uh, concept so i think ai is a pretty cool tool for just generating ideas and and concepts for 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 other pieces so I really wanted to explore this this image, but I couldn't because it's just, just an image. And also, AI is not very good at at, at attaching stories and 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 making it a, like a a personal personal thing. So, so I think it's pretty pretty good idea to turn turn like a a visual concept into something more substantial. So now I had a plan. That's what I was about to do. And um, I, I also had scattered like different uh, 3D tools over time that I wanted to put into test. And and first I wanted to experiment with some Blender Blender workflows, and I I noticed very cool tools like Fluent uh, Power Trip and Fluent Mat Materializer that are pretty much like um, uh, hard surface modeling modeling software. Uh, uh, sim similar to the hard, hard ops and um, and some uh, and the materializer was was like a a node based material creation tool. So so they they were made by the same uh, uh, author and and were supposed to fit together pretty well. So initially I gave the, the, those tools a, a try and and I did like a day and, and a little bit more experimenting, but. Uh, Eventually, it didn't didn't work uh, out really well. So I I think the non-destructive modeling is is quite cool. Uh, however, um, it uh, and and you can do it really fast. But uh, getting from just a concept to and, and going through the all the different processes uh, means that you also need to afterwards do the retopo for the uh, for, for the model to make it game ready. And you also need to bake it, and 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 there there are so many steps that uh, that it takes just too much time. And it, additionally, uh, to to like really bake out every every model as as a unique hero piece generates a lot of texture files as well. And for a modern game game, uh, I wanted to make a first person game. That means that you can really look objects closely, and and they they had to have really large uh, textures. It it also means that you are you're ending up like gigabytes of of different textures and and yeah uh, like even one material uh, like one uh, with, with 4K textures can is can be usually around 50 megabytes in, in in size because yeah it scales really really quickly so 
I took a step back and so uh, thought about what, what other options do, do I have. And I remembered another te technique, uh, and this technique actually was illustrated quite well in a GDC talk about the world building in the Ascent game. So the um, lead, uh, lead director of, of the game, the Tor Frick, uh, uh, gave this uh, pre 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 presentation, and actually what it... Uh, but it turned out that uh, the entire game, it's a big, huge open world game, really, really cool, uses just one uh, trim texture sheet for the, for the entire game. And it has a lot of advantages. And, and by using these trim textures, they were able to make a the pretty, pretty complex game with, with a very limited and, and small, small team and, and having like thousands of, of pieces of assets uh, very quickly. So I started looking into trim sheets and started looking at what kind of layout would, would fit the best for, for a trim sheet. Because if you're looking around in the internet, there are actually, every artist has their own kind of trim sheet layout <laughs> and there, uh, there are a lot of options. So, uh, so what is the best way to set up a, a trim sheet? And ultimately, I I ended up in the ultimate trim layout, uh, the, the like the the standard uh, standard standard uh, trim layout that's uh, recommended a lot. And and what's good about this trim layout, it it it, it has like two sets of materials in different stripe uh, stripes. At the bottom, it also has some room for additional details that you can add on top of the models. And um, and and it ha and. And pretty much you can make a any kind of uh, scenes with just two materials it's, uh, it's, uh, or, or objects, and it uh, uh, allows you to uh, quite a bit. And if you align all your different materials with the same layout, you can also swap them and reuse them uh, pretty quickly. So it's, it's good to have a, a, your own find, a refined uh, material. However, I also t uh, did some little alt uh, uh, alterations for this uh, layout. So, first of all, I ordered the stripes differently. So, uh, in the um, ultimate trim, trim sheets, the stripes are all, all alter alternating. However, I, I grouped them together pairwise. And the benefit of having them pairwise is that now I was also able to take larger trims. So. Uh, to add more details, I can take like like larger trims that uh, span over multiple like like stripes at, at once, and and have some variety in there uh, in there and and yeah. So so yeah, so still have like same material, but but on on larger surfaces. And secondly, I also added some some more details on the edges of the trim sheet. So that if you sample from out, like on, on the middle of the edges, or like, like uh, outside the the outside the texture UV range, you can kind of like have multiple different different details uh, based on where where do you sample on the on the on the sheet. And 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 yeah, and on the bottom I added a couple of different uh, like metallic details that were also good. Good to to, sa to sample in used in different locations and and hide those pipes behind behind some some uh, some 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 uh, areas. All right, so that was my layout. Um, also, one tip is that um, if when, you, when you're making a, a trim sheet, you shouldn't use too much uh, like metal, metal metallic uh, textures. So uh, so this trim trim set just has one. Tiny metal strip uh, on, on the top and and different like um, worn edges, but don't don't like make entire like um, metallic trim sheets and uh, because if you use too too much metallic materials on the on the on your environment, they don't work really well with reflections. The reflection probes usually get like uh, black uh, black holes in the in the locations where where you have met metallic surfaces. So so. Be mindful of, of how much metal metal you use in your in your materials and the environments. And the tool that I used to to make this trim sheet was actually uh, called Surforge. 
Um, it's, it's actually a competing um, uh, game engines uh, like plugin, <laughs> uh, but it's meant for making your own uh, own textures, and and it's it's pretty good for that. So you can also use the Substance Designer or or some other alternative tool, but I I, I just have, have have this at hand and and I'm already familiar with it. So it's it's actually a pretty cool piece of software. So if someone wants, they they could also try to recreate it for Godot because it allows you to add three D models in a in a texture and then render it uh, render it into into like different different maps all at all at once. Uh, but on top of that, I also did some some little alt alteration. Uh, so so although this tool um, produces all the all the common maps, metallic, uh, roughness, albedo, normal, etc. Um, I, I also like edited the roughness a bit uh, so that I had more noise there. It's always useful to have a little bit noise in the roughness map so that the textures are extra extra shiny <laughs> uh, and 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 look look interesting. And I I also wanted I didn't know which colors do I want to have in my in my in my finished uh, piece. So what I did I. I rendered out this very bright green colored texture, and in Affinity Designer, uh, that's my go to, go to image editor, I extracted the green colors from from the texture and and turned it into a color mask. So so now I I also had like the white uh, textured albedo model and the color mask, and I was able to combine them in an interesting way. I will show it in a, in a second. So in the end, the entire scene uses two different uh, trim sheets. It uses a painted metal one that has uh, these two two stripes. One is, is just generic uh, gray, gray tone, and another one with the with the colored ones, and also a concrete material for for the hanger pieces. Uh, and I actually did a little mistake here. <laughs> uh, on the hindsight, I, I would have actually. Um, like switched the uh, the the uh, materials on the on the concrete map so so that they align the same way. So currently they are <laughs> reversed and and I can't like, really switch them so so well uh, the the materials. But uh, yeah, uh, just just a mistake uh, that I that I noticed too too late in the development. All right, and the next step was to set up the material in Godot, test it out. So, I, I I made like a sample material. Um, initially, uh, using just a built-in Godot uh, shader, uh, but there is a really cool uh, feature in Godot that you can actually right-click on the on the material and save it, save your material as a, as, a, as its own custom shader. So you can just save like a material that you're configured as a as a distinct shader and continue editing it. So it's it's really handy. So I, I added the color uh, switching uh, functionality here, and it's, it's quite simple. As you can see on the, on the bottom, it just uh, samples the mask, it samples the albedo texture, and then it mi mixes together the, the albedo texture and tinted albedo texture based on the, on the mask value. So, so as you can see, now I was able to just change the color, color value and, and the texture changes, changes as well. All right. Now, material set up. I was sure that uh, that these these were working properly. The next step was to find a proper way to to create a lot of assets really quickly. And here, I I also uh, found another um, uh, tool uh, for Blender. It's called Create Modeler by Kushiro, and it's actually a really nifty tool. It's uh, it almost works like like a box cutter, uh, where you have like the creeds that you can can add and uh, like uh, just just draw different shapes and and turn them into geometry. Uh, however, it's not non-destructive. It works right in the into the in the edit mode. It's completely destructive, but it's super good because it makes the modeling super fast. You can just iterate really quickly. And and if you're interested in it, I recommend to check out other Koshiro's videos. He's, he also makes a lot of spe speed modeling himself, and it's he's really good at like turning turning off uh, out super complex uh, geometry very very quickly with with his tools. 
So, so yeah, I checked out this tool. It's, it's really, really useful. So my original blockout uh, looked like that. Um, I, I wasn't really happy with the, with the first uh, version of the, of the spaceship, but it already gave me like a kind of proportions and, and, and way to see how, how to, how to set, set, set it up in, in Ecuador. So make some, uh, make some quick, uh, quick uh, clay boxing and, and if it doesn't work out, uh, don't spend too much time on it. Uh, so then I needed also a, a workflow for applying the textures, applying the trim sheets. And in Blender, there are two main uh, tools that, that help you to do that. So there are Ultimate Trim UV, which is a, which is a free, uh, free like Blender plugin. Uh, and it's, it's easy to set up. Uh, but for my, in my experience, I, I didn't like the workflow and the usability that much. Uh, I prefer the other solution, which is called Tikal Machine, uh, which is um, uh, quite a big, bit more expensive tool uh, that, that can do, do also a lot of, lot of other cool, cool uh, workflows and, and uh, stuff. But, um, uh, but I al already had it in my library, so why not to use it? <laughs> so, uh, the setup in in Decal Machine is quite quite complex. You, you need to really uh, go through a complex process uh, to set up your your Decal Decal like layouts uh, or like your trim sheet layouts. But after that, you can actually quite easily like just scroll up with mouse mouse wheel and and choose which which stripe do you want to uh, to add to your model. So with with some specialized tools, you can speed up the workflow quite quite a bit. But yeah, in the future, I, I, I hope that, uh, that there will be even, even better tools for, for trim sheets that are, the, that are designed for that. So that was after the, after the first uh, texturing round. As you can see, I've, I've also switch out, switched out the uh, spacecraft model here. Uh, but once again, you shouldn't get too stuck to in, in one pro process, uh, like modeling or texturing, because especially with texturing, uh, textures and lighting are really hand-to-hand -hand processes and they both like affect each other. So, so you, you might, if you spend too much time in initial texturing, you might end, uh, and, and you, you might find out later that, uh, well, your textures start, do, do not work uh, very well and, and you, might, you might make them lighter or, or, or or something like that. So, so I added it to Godot quite quite soon, and and this was the first lighting setup. Um, I also t uh, a lot of people ask me, did I uh, try the try the uh, Godot for sine distance uh, CI, and I did. However, the issue with sine distance CI is that. Um, it also requires the voxel CI to be baked. Otherwise, it's uh, it's quite quite useless. And if you if you move the camera, it, it uh, the gliding changes all the time. Uh, but for for my complex scene, when when I tested it, uh, the uh, the uh, voxel CI baking failed or it gets stuck. So uh, for the Godot developers, I recommend you should probably add some kind of a, like a progress meter. I would like to see how many voxels are 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 baked, so I know whether it will take me an hour or a day or 10 years <laughs> to, to finish, so yeah. And if, if, if you could also allow the uh, developer to just rebake like a sec section of uh, voxels, it will, will be perfect. Um, so I, I stick to the uh, light mapping, uh, light baking, uh, but Initially, uh, when I did it, um, it turned out that the dynamic shadows was were actually better, and I couldn't get rid of the crisp, uh, crisp like shadows on the on the uh, on the baked lighting. Uh, on the direction light, there is no like um, like section section for that. So my workaround was in, uh, to use a spotlight instead. So this gave me this really nice smooth uh, penumbra, uh, and 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 like like mimicking like a foggy foggy sky so so just a spotlight really far away uh, i also added uh, uh, like uh, different details 
uh, you should usually fill your scenes with a lot of debris, as as, as I did here, um, and uh, and I'm I'm, I'm all that bunch of groups of, of different uh, different uh, debris and just spread it and them out, and also added uh, a couple of other uh, detail elements. And as you can see, it gradually gets better and better. Now, something that you might not see very well is actually the ivy. And and the problem why you don't see it because I had it really little. So in the, in the next part, I, I cranked it up, like scale it up and so on, and, and it's instantly much, much nicer. Everything looks much better. So although it might be a little bit too too large, I think it's, it's now pretty cool. However, uh, the ivy, um, by default, I didn't have a shadows for it. And I t tested the shadow baking, but it turned out really, really dark. And, and I kind of liked the look, but it's, it's some, something was wrong. And in, in a closer inspection, it actually turns out that uh, uh, the semi-transparent materials are, are baked as a solid in, in Godot. Uh, something also that the developers might, <laughs> might uh, think about in the future. But, uh, but my workaround for it is was to actually create like a proxy mesh for the, for the shadows. So I use the Blender geometry nodes to just make a cloud of triangles. And, and this, this, this pretty much solved this issue for, for that moment. And, and that is nice to these shadows. However, it also had the sound side that it increased the primitive count from 1 million to 2 million. So yeah, there are a lot of, lot of triangles visible there. And it, it, um, it doesn't also make it better that Godot only has um, like options for disabled or, or baked, baked uh, options in, in their shadows. So there is no only baked and no, no dynamic option, uh, sh shadow options. So yeah, having, having like uh, regular dynamic shadows on, on these, these polygons is quite, quite expensive. Uh, however, I was, it, it, was, it was easily to overcome by just making a little script that turns out the shadows after, after the game starts. Uh, here's a quick look um, of the poly count. So initially, um, initially um, it, the anger itself is actually quite lightweight. It's uh, just 140 uh, triangles. Uh, but... Um, the rubble is is actually, but it's quite 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 a lot. So it, it increased it to 750, because yeah, there. Are, although I have had made the rubble quite low poly, it's still there is still quite a lot of it, and they are sometimes clipping through the walls and 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 increased it a bit, and the EV meshes just the 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 regular like uh, semi-transparent geometry actually is, is not that that hard. So. The triangle clouds really added a lot of lot of uh, extra extra geometry to the, that that was invisible but <laughs> but still uh, still used for the shadow shadow uh, mapping. So yeah, uh, so that's that's how, where the million million uh, polygons comes from. Uh, so yeah, turning off the shadows on runtime uh, definitely solves the issue. Uh, however, um, there are some additional downsides as, as, as well. So later on, um, I, the, I, I, I was kind of noticing that the baking got quite a bit longer as well. So you have a lot of, lot of triangles. It obviously increases the baking time and overall makes the development uh, slower and, and not so, so nice. So... Um, I, I, I tried another approach, which is to also optimize the IV, IV meshes a bit and make like a very handcrafted uh, geometry for it that that has the holes baked into it. So, uh, so here's my here's my uh, processes. So I first uh, I, I did it twice. Uh, the first time it it got a little bit high poly, 250 trees, and the second time I I got it redu uh, reduced to 107, and 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 I'm I'm quite proud of of the optimization. It's it not just the shadow uh, baking time, but it also decreases the overthrow of of the IB, and and I was just able to add much more of it. 
I, I also made the texture tensor, so, so, uh, so yeah. And the new, new models that, that was uh, composed of, for, for those, those uh, ivy, ivy planes looked a little bit like, like spaghetti, I think. So quite tasty and, and also tasty for the, for the GPU. So, yeah, uh, and and yeah, th those those uh, meshes combined are just just under five thousand triangles, which uh, covers the scene quite well, and actually even made the shadows much nicer because uh, first of all, now the uh, now the ivy itself could self shadow, so so that that issue was uh, fixed. And and also the shadows got a little bit darker, which um, which helped as well. All right. Next, I started working on the outside environment. Um, so, as you know, there is no uh, terrain node in in Godot <laughs> built in, uh, but I, I think it's okay. Um, but for for my demo scene, I didn't really want to use like uh, like like too many. Uh, like out, outside our third third party plugins, uh, I wanted to keep it lean. So for this scene, I I just wanted to little like something behind the behind the uh, gate, so so it's not just completely flat. So I made this made this custom geometry, uh, custom outside that's only only looks good at at, at a certain certain angle. <laughs> um, <clears throat> however, I wanted to. Have a nice um, non like repeated r repeating uh, ground surfaces. So, so yeah, when when you just add a plain plain ground on a on a mesh or a plain texture on on on, on a on a mesh, it uh, kind of starts repeating uh, quite quickly. So, the solution how to break this repetition easily is to add multiple ma uh, materials and and blend them together based on vertex colors. You can make a custom shader pretty, 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 uh, pretty fast. So I made those meshes, and I exported them from Blender to Godot. And at first, it was all messed up. All the like nice uh, arranged like uh, like patches were all randomly like distributed as as a noise. So something was wrong. So I'm not sure if it, it's uh, fixed by 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 the latest Godot version. But it actually turns out that the GLTF uh, format is not that that handy with uh, vertex colors and uh, and Col Colada works though. So <laughs> the solution for that was just to export this piece in in Colada that that exports the vertex colors uh, correctly. Correctly. All right, and for the outsides, I needed even more hand paint, hand hand like. Made uh, textures. Um, I, I could have used like like photographs as well, but I didn't have them at hand, and I didn't want to use any like third-party uh, like textures uh, or or textures that are not CC zero licensed. So I I I spent a little bit more time to really hand paint them. It uh, it took took a bit, a bit time, but you can. Uh, but I, I I'm quite happy with the result, and and it shows that you you can actually hand ma uh, paint. Realistic looking textures as well. So, so these are these are some ex of the examples, and and the same goes for the trees. But I'm not that happy with the trees. Uh, I, they they look a little bit low poly from the distance, um, a, a little bit, little bit PlayStation 2 era. But uh, but for 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 now, I, I think it it was enough. So that's that's something I I definitely could have improved. So these are the outside scenes, uh, and once I put it together, there ar arose another issue, uh, namely um, the outside now had quite large, large scale in distance. So to to have a nice like broad broad view, and and um, there was an issue with light baking because if you just ba uh, bake s such a long distances, it really takes forever. And it uh, generates like really huge light maps that are like like enormous. So the solution for that is obviously to reduce the light map size uh, for the distant objects. So so I tried to do that, but um, 
in Godot uh, option, uh, like in the in the geometry light, light map scale option, there is just three, four different options. There is like one time, two time, and uh, up to eight time. Uh, not nearly enough to to scale anything from 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 the distances that I needed. So so they they still produced huge huge light maps. Even if you if I if I made everything that was clo uh, close by one uh, one x and everything in distance eight x, so so yeah, um, may maybe you can just add uh, some some more uh, options in the future. It, I think it shouldn't be too hard. Um, however, there are a couple of other places where you can change the light map sizes as well. Luckily, so. The other place is in under the mesh, uh, mesh settings. So mesh has their own light map resolution saved, saved into them, and you can manually uh, correct them, tweak them. So yeah, for for a while I just removed the last last uh, digit, and and it was small enough for to not take too much space. <laughs> there was an issue too. If you do that every time you re-import the models. Uh, the light map uh, size will be overwritten, so you need to manually uh, tweak all those all those values again. So, yeah, uh, that was quite frustrating a couple of times. So, so eventually I got tired of it, and there is an, a third option, and this is actually uh, when you import the mesh, uh, then you can also uh, change the light map size on the ex entire entire model that you have so eventually i exported a different set of set of geometry for the large scale and medium scale and and, uh, and near nearby geometry and and added, uh, gave them them all different uh, light map sizes so so that that works <laughs> but uh, but it, it took quite quite a lot of trial and error to to get to this this uh, this conclusion that, that you need to have multiple exports because yeah, one one like uh, GLTF file can only have one uh, light map but exercise at at once at one time. All right, then that's that's the outside look. So I I I'm quite happy with uh, with a uh, other than the three uh, trees that are maybe a little bit too low poly. All right, uh, next I. I wanted to give it a, a little bit different, uh, different atmospheres and different lighting conditions. So I, the, the back side, I blocked in with a with a door with a red light, um, and I, I personally really like um, the reflection probes, uh, like uh, reflection, yeah, reflection probes, uh, and and just just uh, uh, bake all the all the reflections. It's fast and it actually looks really good if you set up them set, set them up correctly. So, in in your reflection probes, there are little checkbox to use the box projection, and you just need to scale the reflection probe area to fit the geometry as nicely as possible to have like really crisp and almost like uh, if 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 your uh, scene is. Uh, Boxy enough, it will uh, uh, match really well and, and look almost like like ray, ray traced. So, so and in Godot, the I'm I'm super happy with the reflection probes. They they just work out of the box. Uh, you can change the resolution in the settings and and there is no hassle. I in, in other engines I've always had some 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 hassle with uh, with getting them work correctly and and plan it to, uh, correctly. And another place where the Reflection probes are really obvious. They are are the insides of the space spacecraft. So uh, these uh, nice light stripes that are reflected on the on the uh, ramp are actually also just reflection probes. Uh, th they might not be like 100% correctly reflected, like as you can see currently. They, uh, the right sides uh, mm, should should probably occlude the reflections a bit, but. But they they trick trick the brain pretty well. So, yeah, reflection probes are really nice in in Godot. And I, I also tried the um, screen space reflections, um, but in my opinion, they make 
to make the reflections too crisp, and, and I prefer the more diffuse look of the reflection probes. Um, right, so, uh, um, one little detail that was also nice was uh, initially I just added different um, point lights uh, around the scene to, to make it look nice uh, without any, any purpose. Uh, and, and it really works. I, I always had this, uh, this orange light in the, in the side, at the side of the spaceship. Uh, but, um, um, uh, but eventually it should, should make some, some kind of sense where the light comes from. So I added those uh, standing lights. And to, to make them extra, extra nice, I gave them uh, just a simple like, billboard uh, that's facing towards the player. Uh, with, with, with a billboard shader and 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 uh, this lens flare makes makes them like super super polished. Simple simple trick, but works quite well. Uh, on the back side of the scene, I wanted to give it uh, give it some more lively look, uh, make it like uh, like someone uh, was uh, was kind of staying there and uh, or something like that. So. I used the Blender cloth simulation to make this uh, this um, hammock, and and yeah, although the default cloth simulation made it like really bendy, I stretched it out, uh, up a bit, and and it looks much nicer than than the hand sculpted sculpted version. So it was also a nice collaboration between open source software. <laughs> uh, and to give it uh, it my own personal touch, I I I had the idea that I would like to have like a uh, gaming machine uh, uh, at the back of the area that, that plays the Plasternaut game. <laughs> so, uh, how I did it was I, I actually, I, I didn't embed the entire Plasternaut game into the demo, <laughs> but I, I just recorded a small, small uh, video of it, a really low quality to, uh, to make it run fast. And I, I had a viewport, I rendered it on top of the viewport. For some reason, if you just assign the texture, like the render texture in in the um, in the editor, it doesn't like really connect. So you, you need to actually set the texture in, inside the code. But here is the code, just one line, nothing special. And at first, it didn't really run. It was it was just black screen. So I wondered quite a bit. So why why does it work in the UI, uh, but not not on the on the actual 3D 3D geometry where I wanted to display this texture. And it turned out that you also need to set the sub, uh, sub viewport update mode to always update. So unless it's, if it's outside the view, which is, which is, which is what it always is, <laughs> it's, it's not rendering. So yeah, and it has a nice, nice plaster nut running on. I also added some particles to the scene, uh, uh, dust particles. I got the idea from the Rafa and his his Godot scene, so we had a little competition. And um, at the time, there was a bug with the particles that the, if you use use like alpha blended uh, alpha, alpha blended uh, shaders, then they don't work well with fog. They they leave like like borders around some of them. But but I I just used regular alpha blending instead. Oh, if you use additive blending, then they don't work. Uh, alpha blended uh, work nicely. So yeah, and finally. Uh, getting putting all things together, um, I I also added some controls. I added some U, UI uh, UI options, and as as an extra touch, uh, I added a color selection in the UI, so you can actually change the colors uh, real time, and and whenever you changed it, I also notified the reflection probes. Uh, just call uh, reflection probes. By default, they are just not updating every frame. But uh, whenever I change the color, I, you can just call reflection probe update once, and it just works. It uh, it um, uh, re-renders all the uh, reflection probes, and it's really nice to see all the all the pretty much all the lighting change all the, all at once. So even if you can't have dynamic uh, global illumination. Just having re reflection probes that you can update gives quite a nice, nice touch as well. So, 
I think that's uh, that was all. That was the entire project broken apart. So, who haven't seen this video yet, uh, here is the final result of the demo scene. And yeah, quite a lot of people liked it, so I was super, super happy. Especially that I chose Godot as... Uh, there, there already are like, a, a lot, of, lot of demo scenes for other game engines, but, but people were super excited when, when they saw it in Godot. So, I'm happy to answer any questions you, you might have. Uh, you mentioned a couple of times that it speeds up your process, but how long it takes after all? Yeah, the entire development took me just a bit over, over a month. Uh, like, uh, like quite quite a bit, like let's say a month of work we, uh, full time. Uh, uh, I, no, I didn't do like, 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 uh, like all day on, I, I used different spots in the afternoon and, and, and evening, so that's, that's why it also took me a little bit more than, than a, a month to develop, but, but uh, approximately one, one month of work. 160 hours, so. <laughs> um. Yes. So you mentioned that uh, you avoid metallic textures um, because they look black in the you know baked version. Don't you think that just uh, some kind of bug that should be reported because it sounds like you know they try to use like you know baked reflections that are not baked yet or something like that. Uh, to to bake some some reflections into textures, you mean? Uh, can you can you? Yeah, so I mean, you, at the beginning of the talk, you you, you, you you said that you avoided metallic textures in trim sheets. Yes. So you said that they look uh, black for some reason when you baked, uh, and they issue them the reflections. If I understand correctly. Uh, to be one hundred percent honest, I haven't really tested in in uh, Kodo. I have tried it in other engines, but usually m materials uh, like metallic. Uh, Materials don't uh, like diffuse light, so they uh, they they just uh, tint the re uh, reflections on their own. So unless the reflection capture actually takes like multiple multiple uh, bounces in the, into considerations, they usually tend to look just black on the on the reflection probe images. So and this this means that they themselves don't pu uh, give out the the correct color in, in the reflections, but but I probably should uh, test it more in in uh, in Godot as well to give you more more precise answer. <laughs> okay, yes, I have a question about tripsheet. You said that using tripsheet is better than using texture. Why? What's the difference between tripsheet and textures? Um. So there are like trim sheet is a texture, uh, but it's a texture that you apply in a texture first approach. So you first make the texture, and then you will model and and use this texture. Uh, usually, like traditionally, it's done the other way around. You make the model and then you paint it. But uh, the benefit of using trim sheet is that you can reuse the different areas, different little uh, little like uh, bolts and and. Uh, uh, details that you that you have, and and cover the entire model with just single single texture, and and also reuse the same trim sheet for multiple models. So, so eventually it keeps your project light, and uh, and it's really nice to work uh, with projects that are not hundreds of gigabytes in size, <laughs> and uh, that's that's I personally what I really like about Kodo is that it's really light and fast, uh, and and I, I I like to keep it that way. <laughs> Hi, um, I really like your trim sheet, um, but just like a small suggestion. So the mask, the, the green mask that you have on your, on your spaceship, you can basically just use the, the first vertex channel inside Blender so that you can save like one, 
um, <clears throat> one draw code for that, and also like the uh, the uh, black and white mask that you have there. So basically, you can put that into the alpha channel of your albedo and your normal map as well. Yeah. So um, I I don't think that the um, vertex colors work so well uh, for the masks because it has a lot of like tiny details that you don't want to tint. You don't want to tint the the scratches that are metallic, and you just want to tint the the surfaces that are colored, uh, uh, but um, or like recolor those surfaces. Uh, but for the uh, multiple masks, I actually did that. I I packed uh, uh, like uh, metallic uh, albedo roughness together. I also packed the height and color masks uh, together. It uh, it makes it faster uh, just to sample, and it also um, it, it it also reduces the file size is quite, quite a bit. So I, uh, b b without that technique, they are uh, even, uh, the, the size of the textures is even, even beyond 50 megabytes. Uh, so yeah. I have a quick question. Yes. Um, have you tried revisiting the same scene in Godot 4.2 or 4.1? Yeah, I, I have opened it up. It opened up nicely in Godot. 4.1, and everyone else can also do that. It's uh, available in the Godot um, asset library. So it takes like five minutes to just click download the scene uh, in, in, the, in the starting menu. Uh, it, it downloads five minutes, and then you open it up, and it's, it's there. <laughs> so you can try, try it yourself. Uh, but uh, I, I haven't tried it in Godot 4.2 yet. Ah. I hope it works. <laughs> yes. It's really quick. Uh, it, how how's the demo license? Hmm? Like, what's the license of the demo? Uh, I'm uh, the project itself and also source code is under MIT license uh, for the code. For the assets, I have uh, put them under uh, Creative Commons. Um, uh, uh, Attribution uh, non-commercial for now, in, in, uh, with a clause that if any Godot developer wants to actually use them in, the, in their game, so just take contact with me and, and I'll give you my permission to use that. So uh, I, I I don't want to like make them completely open source to to not see like many asset packs <laughs> made made out of out of my assets. So, uh, but if you if if you if you're excited to use them, then just just write me in in in, in Twitter or Current X, for example, <laughs> and I'll 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 happily provide you the the right to use to do so. <laughs> Thanks. Um, you mentioned earlier that you used another engine before and then switched to Godot. Um, I was wondering what exactly um, about Godot made you stick? What was the nice thing that you wanted from another engine but couldn't get, but you could get it in Godot? That you can finally, I was finally able to make games. <laughs> and, and not so, so, so yeah, in Godot, um, it, the Godot script is just so, so nice and lovely to, to, uh, to work with. It's super, comp super compact. It's uh, the API is uh, made for humans <laughs> and and developers. So so yeah, I I, I think the Godot script was what I f mostly fell fell in fell in love to. So <laughs> I, and I have to say I I I I was really a big fan of C sharp before, and uh, and I didn't really like Python, but I started to love love Godot script. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, too.